I think I am going to kind of start off with what you were talking about. It's like, I have to admit, I mean, we're doing one of these for every brand. This is our third one. Now. I'm not really an Audi guy. And then I went on the, on the internet and started doing some research. I've driven a lot of Audis, but the more that you kind of dig around, the more that you go, oh yeah, that was a really cool car. And I'd really like to have one of those. And I remember watching him race, when, you know, back in the 80s. Actually, Audi is a pretty cool brand. And there's some really, really interesting cars and some really interesting people. That a lot of history, right? Yeah. There's a lot of history. And I think part of what's interesting about Audi is that it was a bunch of different brands that kind of came together. So it's a very kind of diverse uh, brand and diverse kinds of cars that they've sold. So I think the, way, the best way to start the, this off is probably, you know, we start with you, Jeff. What's your favorite? Of the current lineup, and maybe are we limited to favorite Audi of all time? Are we limited to what's in our market? No. Well, <laughs> well I, 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 that's that's actually I think something that's that's worth discussing is yeah. there's definitely some forbidden fruit that yeah. we would love to have here. Yeah, I would say if for if it's a global thing, uh, I would say probably the uh, the RS6 Avant would be plus. Yeah. The, uh, is the there plus, a plus absolutely, yeah. And yeah. Something yeah. Yeah. yeah, that would be definitely, uh, and I go on record. Obviously, I've never driven it, but yeah. it, it just it every it does everything that I would want a car to do. Right, yeah. it goes really fast. bloody fast. Yeah. Uh, it's and it's very very practical. You yeah. can do everything everything with it. What about your favorite car within our? Um, that's a little tougher because you know. There, it, me as a as a say I was a single guy, it would probably be an S three. Okay. Um, as a family guy, probably R seven if I was in that uh, bracket. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Perry, you've owned a lot of Audis. What was your first one? My first one was a nineteen seventy six Audi one hundred L S. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about that car because <laughs> that the Audi one hundred took many forms yes. over the years. So that was pretty well the first evolution of the 100. Yeah. And um, there was a few brought into North America, not a lot, but that was basically Audi's introduction into a sedan in the luxury market they were growing. Yeah. And the car had a Porsche engine in it, which was a slant four, right. front wheel drive. The very first one had inboard front disc brakes on it. Huh. Mine did not. Right. Mine's my 76 didn't. Um, but I drove that car and I thought, you know what? This is this is pretty cool. It's, it smells European. The leather inside was <laughs> yeah. really nice. And European cars have that smell. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. distinctive and, smell. Yeah. Yeah. You know, at that time I, I bought it very reasonably. It wasn't brand new. I bought it secondhand, and I drove that car for about three years. And you know, the Audi 4000 was around at that time, and I moved mm -hmm. from that to my aunt had an Audi 4000. I had a 4000. That was my first Audi. And 4000 Quattro, 1986. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love that car. Yeah, the Quattro. Yeah, it was Quattro. They were rare. Yeah. The thing was rusted. It was, but it ran. The guy yeah. just, I loved that car. I got it. It was why my winter you, beer. Why, why did you love it so much? I can go anywhere. Like, I remember yeah. us going out with friends. We'd go out to, you know, to a lounge or to a club on a Friday night. Yeah. And we'd pull into a parking lot. The parking lot's full. And it's in the middle of the winter. Yeah. And there's... They had plowed the corner with all the pile of snow, and I got nowhere to park. Yeah. I'd climb up. Like, right? I had security one night. They come out, and they're like, you can't park there. Why not? It's a parking spot. <laughs> just because I can park there, and you can't. So, yeah. That's what I loved about it. You locked the diffs on that thing, and it just went straight Did up. you lock the diffs? Yeah. You really? Like, yeah. From the dash? Yeah. Well, you had to switch down in the center console, and you lock yeah. it, and you just, all, four, all four wheels powered you up. Learned something new every day. Yeah, nothing was yeah. an inline five, so yeah. it, was, it was torquey. Well, it's funny, because I, I started making a list of what would be like the perfect Audi, because the more you read it, like, okay, there's so many things that, that define Audi, you know, the design obviously is one thing, but like the perfect Audi in my mind would be, okay, it's got LED lights at the front, it has blistered fenders like an Air Quattro or like, a, or like an RS, uh, like an RS6 uh, uh, yeah. Avant or an RS5, um, it would have Quattro, and it would have some weird engine configuration, whether I, it's... I'll I, I, I tell you what would be actually <laughs> the perfect Audi, and I think a lot of these guys agree with me. Yeah. Uh, probably A4, uh, RS, uh, RS4, RS6. RS4 Avant. is pretty awesome. RS4, RS6, Avant. Uh, it's got to be a white. With, wagon, a, right? with, yeah. Yeah, with a, uh, a hopped up of some sort, yeah. TDI, 
manual transmission. Manual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unsellable wonder. Exactly. Right? That would be the car of all cars. In, in brown, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, in brown. <laughs> don't knock the modern technology, though, because yeah. one of my favorite current cars is the RS5. Mm -hmm. And with, with that uh, S-tronic transmission and the yeah. paddle shift, yeah. oh, that thing is sweet. You, you know, the funny thing is, when, nice I, when I was in Germany, I drove the RS, uh, RS5. Yeah. Uh, I was taking it on the Autobahn and it had the s -tronic and everything. I get on the uh, get on the Autobahn, you just put the pedal down and, and then you have the, the paddle shifting and you're and just you're like bang, 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 bang. Yeah. You know, I got up to 265k yeah. and I'm driving there and it's just like this. Solid. Like, yeah, and you're not solid. passing anybody ridiculously fast. No. Yeah. Yeah. You're just like, yeah. 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 this isn't so bad. Yeah. You're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's the best, best thing ever. So yeah. I, I, yeah. I do agree with with that standpoint but you know i mean there's always something to be said about the manual transmission and, yeah. and the the forbidden fruit like you said yeah. right there's there, something, something you can get, get with you always want, you always yeah. want more right yeah. in, in my mind like you start to look back at some of the, the cars that audi has, has sold and they have done some very strange engines mm -hmm. over the years. i mean five cylinder to me is like mm -hmm. signature audi right yeah. but um v is not very mm -hmm. common um W but twelve. Yes, yeah. you know, there have been some really, really interesting engine configurations. Like Perry, you've owned a lot of them. Do like, you have a favorite? Yeah. The, well, the five turbo is definitely yeah. one of my favorites, and I yeah. still have one today. Yeah. And I just love the note that makes that full song. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the torque that they develop is pretty incredible. Yeah. And uh, just unique. One of, one of my favorite contemporary ideas is the TTRS. Yep. That, mm -hmm. that, that gives you a lot of modern yeah. and yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. that retro every it, time you yeah. get on it, right? You, you know, hear the old car. In totally it. modern yeah. car, but feels very old school. Probably Turbo one of my five, favorite, favorite cars on the track shift. is the TTRS. Yeah. 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 It's Absolutely. just something really special. I, mean, I think the TT to me, you know, even forget about the driving side of the equation, like as a design icon. I think mm -hmm. it's just one of those well, future collectibles. It set, it set the bar very high, even when they first came out. I still think the you first know, one's the best looking one. Yeah, I just, it's, I it's, just, it's, I just took one in on trade. It was an yeah. LMS edition. Yeah. yeah. They oh, reluctantly, do tell. Wow. They, they, <laughs> they owned it uh, since new, or very lightly used. I think it had 6,000K when they got it. Maybe it was yeah. an Audi Canada demo or something. Yeah. And uh, he, uh, the, the owner absolutely loved the car. Yeah. Loved it to death. And, and is it available? One of them. It was snagged I, up by I, one I, of the quarters like, really, really quickly. Find the Mark One TT. I yeah, that, right? yeah. It yeah. was. Uh, it was nice. It was yeah. the Avis Silver. Avis Silver. Yeah. I'm not even sure in the proper pronunciation. Those multi spoke but, uh, wheels. It. Um, it had the red I'm, interior. It had the red, red interior. interior. Yeah. And, you know, it was a nice car for yeah. its. It showed well for its uh, for its age. It had a little bit of an accident on it, but. Yeah. Um, he reluctantly gave it up, and there's he can't find a replacement because he can't. He wants manual, right? So he so he traded it in, and he didn't. Well, they were they have another vehicle, okay. and they were get replacing the vehicle for their son to go to university. So they got right. a Q three for him. Yeah, traded this TT in and the wagon, and which Danny's, I bought. Danny's got the, there. Yeah. There was a two ah, I see. Six of our, yeah. Okay, yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That was such a nice car. I remember when it launched. It was just like a... Yeah, that thing was... Yeah, yeah I remember you know, the, when it the, came the interesting thing is, uh, I, I remember when I had my A4 Avant 3 liter yeah. uh, stick. Mm -hmm. um, great car. Loved it to death. When I went to sell it, mm -hmm. I had a difficult time actually selling it because yeah. it was manual transmission. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, but what a great car. I mean, six-speed manual and a three-liter is it really beautiful. Yeah. yeah. But uh, to, to find somebody to buy it is very, very I difficult. I think that's one of the reasons Audi's just kind of gone away from it, yeah. right? And it's a niche. Yeah. It right? is. It's Absolutely. a small niche. It's, it's sad, but yeah, it's, it is niche. Part, part of their message these days, too, is all about the technology. Mm -hmm. right? Like, everything is high-tech. You turn the, the new Q7 or a TT on, you've got that virtual cockpit dashboard. So the, the nice, the, the nice thing about it is they're actually... Uh, uh, with the new A4 that's coming out, they're bringing the Avant. Yes. They're finally that's bringing it back. Yeah, they're bringing that's, that's what they're saying. Yeah, fingers crossed, fingers crossed instead, yeah. of, instead of an all room. And maybe. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Maybe, yeah. maybe an RS. RS yeah. And maybe yeah. S. I mean, I know, I know with my with my A4, I, I looked for my A4 uh, Avant for 
uh, well over a year yep. before I even found it. And then the second I, I got it, I had to make that decision right away. Um, it's funny. There's I mean, the it's wagons one, it's one, it's really difficult to sell on one yeah, side, but when you get one, yeah. like we get one on the, on the CPO lot, mm-hmm. and it was gone. It goes. Yeah. Mine was one. Mine was one of two in Canada. Serious? Yeah, yeah, I actually, I, I took the, after I bought the car, yeah. I took the uh, the VIN number and I sent it off down to Canada and I yeah. said, hey, can you tell me a little bit of the history on this car? Mm-hmm. They gave me the full breakdown of the, all of the 2011s that came in mm-hmm. and they said, with your car, your color combination, the options That's that bad. you have, you actually have one of two in Canada. So what color is it? What's so special about the spec? Monza Silver, S-Line, Premium Plus, Nav, Bang & Olufsen, Backup Camera. But and basically mistake. every option you can get, no, no, because they weren't available. I think the Monza the Silver is the one that did that. Well, really the Monza Silver, yeah. they, had, they had 11 in Canada. Yeah. But then when you got into the uh, Premium Plus, Nav, and the Bang & Olufsen and stuff, that's where it kind of cut down. Yeah. So, and then with the Monza that I've already done on it, uh, it's basically one of none. <laughs> a, a one of one in Canada. Do you guys remember when Audi first got into that super avant market? Oh, yeah. The 2003 S6, 4.2 yeah. V8. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Had about yeah. 300 With those and, aluminum mirror caps, yeah. yeah. right. six yeah. spoke alloys. I can remember when the car arrived yeah. on the lot and I was out with a salesman and he says, I got to show you this trick. This car is incredible. I had about 360 horsepower. Yeah. And he says, okay, see if you can touch the dash. <laughs> so he, he, he puts it in sport, it. sport mode and got on it. And you're going like this, you know. That was pretty impressive for a big old heavy wagon like that. But boy, they were nice cars. Yeah, that 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 generation of A6 in my mind is the best looking A6. The interior was gorgeous. They had these atmospheres, I think they called it, for yeah. the interior. Yeah. yeah. And the sedan was just like this beautiful roof line. Everything, every line in that car was was amazing. And I think that actually, when you Kind of like you were saying, Jeff, some of the stuff that was hard to sell back then, now you go like, oh, wouldn't I love to have a Mark 1 yeah. TT? Try I'd, finding a really I'd nice Mark 1 TT. If I picked one up back then, if I had known right? then what I know now. Try and find you know, a really nice garage, right? S6 yeah. Avant. Mm-hmm. Mm, they basically don't exist, right? Yeah. Like You can't find them because the people that love them Keep will them. never let them yeah. go because yeah. you can't get them. And then when they finally do let them go, they're just beyond. They're three hundred thousand kilometers. Yeah. And how many how many kilometers are on your A eight? My A eight has two sixty on it now. Yeah, it still goes. Runs strong. like the clock. It feels just like a new car. Yeah, it looks like a new car. Yeah. It does look. <laughs> What's the new car? It looks like a new car too. I've got one of those A sixes as well. Yeah, you know, and that's. Uh, you know that thing's like new style, but I love that body style as you were saying. It's beautiful. They uh, they were really aggressive, like the the four point two with the with the wide yeah, with the flares. Yeah. I actually yeah. like that car on on the slightly smaller wheels, not the five spokes. Like yeah. they had this. Oh, the fat fives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. It's, Hey man, that that car made those fat five uh, wheels. Everybody wanted those wheels after that yeah. car. I think back. a few of them got uh, liberated yeah. from the back. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're right. You're right. We went that. Yeah. yeah, it was good for yeah. parts. We were selling them crazy. Yeah, man. really. Yeah. yeah. If you were to pick uh, an Audi from, let's say, well, between now and between the beginning and, and now, that you think would be like a future collectible, something you'd put away and just go like. One day that's going to be so a current car that would be a future. Doesn't that be a current car, but from, yeah. anything you know? I, mean, I think Audi's the RS4 still a is probably going to be one of the yeah the, the sedan or like the, the B7. Seven. C7, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's definitely going to be one you'll see. RS5 will probably start to get be pretty one. rare. Yeah. The RS5 will definitely. RS4 is way more rare than the RS5. I think so. Yeah, I think the RE GT will probably be a collector. Yeah, yeah, right? uh, obviously. My favorite spec on the R8 is actually six-speed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Am I on really yeah. You know what? Actually, the funny thing is, with the R8, every time you see it, it doesn't yeah. matter whether it's a 2009 or if it's a 2015, so it just looks so beautiful. Everything about that car is perfect. It I don't screams think exotic, but doesn't. Yeah. Doesn't but it's not so in your face. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. when you figure what it what it can go up against. Yeah. I mean, if it really, if it came yeah. down to a choice in between a Lambo and, and an R8, because well, yeah, you I can, can drive take the R8, R8 every, every day. day long. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. can drive yeah. it every day. You can throw a, a set of I've, winters I've on it. I've driven one. Like right? so, yeah. yeah. And the big awesome. thing about the R8 versus say a Lambo, and I know it's within the family, but yeah. people people see it, they don't go douche. You yeah. Know, yeah. Like, <laughs> right? That's this is the R8. Wow. You know, like you see the kids. The kids will, you know, they'll say wow about any exotic. Yeah. But, 
the, the grown-ups. Are <laughs> the purists will, will look, will respect the Audi more than than like the Lambo, because I mean, like Lambos are, they're nice cars, yeah. but but it's, it's a, a different clientele. Much. It is. <laughs> it's flashy. You got all the flashy colors, right? Yeah. It's in your face. Yeah. yeah. So only certain. And that's people, what it's yeah. all about. Right? Exactly. It's supposed to be. Where the R8, R8 is, it's a nice car and people will notice it. You'll still get more heads turned yeah. to look at the R8, but it's not so much. I keep telling Perry to keep an eye out for one that has like 250k or whatever. <laughs> well, we have, you know, one, we have one our track rental right? <laughs> so, yeah. Give it a few more years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know. Yeah. I, it's I, the I, I told Steve, right? like, let me let me know when R2. you're ready to sell that car because <laughs> by, by the time I it's did a good session out. at the development track uh, in the spring in the yeah. car, right as we got it. Yeah. needed Break lead badly, but yeah. it I drove was that fun. car to Three Rivers and back. This, yeah. And what's great about it is that it does all of the track stuff, but you, yeah, you put it in comfort mode and it's got cruise. a great stereo. You can cruise in it. It's super comfortable. Yeah. It's got good headlights and good wipers and all of that stuff that a lot of exotic yeah. cars do. I, I have to say, I'm very, very sad to say that is the only Audi that I've never driven. I've really? yeah. never driven an R8 before. Wow. And well, you got to fix just, that. Oh, I got to yeah. fix it, obviously, right? <laughs> but, you know, it's, you know, even, it, it's so, you know, coming from somebody who hasn't driven one of those, you know, even just looking at them, sitting inside them, just walking around them, and, you know, you get that, you get that excitement. And the problem is, is that when we work in the automotive industry, we see a car, you see a new car that comes out, mm -hmm. and you're around it all the time. You're like, you get a little blase. Eh, okay, yeah. right, great. But, yeah. you know, it's those cars that you still get really, really excited about seeing. Or even if one pulls in, or yeah. if they're in the shop, who's working on one, I'm out there taking a look, you know. Yep. It's, <clears throat> That's a car that really lives up to its look. Too. Yeah. It drives exactly as well as it is right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, even now, like it's it's eight years old. Right? It's, mm. it the next gen is apparently brilliant. is phenomenal. Yeah. Anyone that I've spoken to that's had a chance to get behind the wheel, yeah, is blown away with that car. Yeah. And, and it's got all the new gadgets. All the new gadgets, the virtual cockpit, yeah. the start button on the steering wheel, which is really cool. A lot of yeah. guys get get real jazzed about that. Yeah. Um, I was speaking with. Uh, he will go uh, unnamed at this point because yeah. he had a videoed. Uh, himself on the racetrack okay. controlled environment of course <laughs> uh, just to see what the car could do yeah. at most port stopped at 5b yeah. launch and accelerate about this. Yes. up to uh, 8 yeah. and um, 260 265 yeah. from a dead from stop, a dead stop. Mm. I and I drove a, a competitive brand yeah. that I would think would be faster I and mean, yeah. perhaps they didn't exit 5b fast enough but yeah. uh, i maybe got 270 on a lap yeah not from a dead a stop lap, right mm -hmm. like that's pretty impressive for yeah. the power of the acceleration what do you, get, what do you guys think of the virtual cockpit i yeah. love it thanks great i was in the tt the other uh, the other night and uh, i was driving it i mean it's weird because you're always so used to having something off over to the here. side yeah and with this car there's nothing off to the side and it's all right there but you know what I do find with it is I find that maybe because it's just new, I it's find distracting. Yeah, yeah. Here, yeah. Be it is here, so you know? cool. <laughs> but I would draw. I, you know, after the I, I, I took the TT for for a few hours. Mm. After the first thirty minutes of like, oh wow, this is so cool. Like I have my whole map. Like yeah. Yeah. I switched it back so it looked like a set of wheels. Yes. Yeah. But I think what's really cool is that you have that option. That's right. You yeah. know, to to have it look exactly the way you want it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can configure the dials however you want. You can have your, all your phone stuff in there. I think the only thing about it, which the A, the new A4 that's coming and the Q7 have corrected, is that at least in the TT, your passenger doesn't get to have any fun at all because no. they have no screen to play with. All of the controls they've got their uh, heated control. control. Yeah, yeah, they've got a heated yeah. control on the CT, and that's kind of it. And I, I think it. it Works well in the TT though. When it, oh, it's it so almost absolutely. kind of goes absolutely. back to Mark yeah. One, where it, yeah. it had it's it had the radio down there, yeah. but it's it didn't car, have car, it's a any uh, it's a driver's car, right? Yeah. It's not yeah, and then when you get the S, you get the sport, the sport uh, yeah. mode where you have the large tack, the big tack, yeah. and yeah. the stuff on the side. Very cool. It's really, really, really cool. What other cars from Audi's past could we put away? Now? Sport well, Quattro. Quattro. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, Can that's on my list. I would love to find Quattro already is the, the legend. The short wheel base. But the more yeah. attainable one would be the Ur Quattro, yeah. you know, 1983 to 1987. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you can find one. Coupe Quattro. But yeah. the price already on those cars they in the last really year have up. darn near doubled if they're good. Yeah. 
So yeah. you, you can see that's uh, Call definitely me crazy. Classic. But crazy. You know, car I've always, uh, yeah. You know, cars I've always, fa I've always fancy. Yeah. Is a '99 A4. <laughs> I don't know why. Do you remember we built I that just, one? I oh, yeah. love those cars. British touring car. I love, I love yeah. when you and they sold I love them in really cool colors. Yeah, I, I love when you sit yeah. in like they have the interiors and right? everything. You yeah. sit inside it. Yeah. The way that it all just kind of lays out, the way that it flows down there, the yeah. way yeah. the way that the steering wheel felt. That it just spoke to yeah. yeah. me. Was like the nicest <laughs> steering. Wheel. I have two friends with them right now. They just picked them up. Like they got them. They had they bought them used, and I'm like. Want to trade? Like, yeah, yeah, because yeah, they they are. There's something about those those cars that just appeals. I love the S4 of that yeah. generation. Like yeah, the yes, six absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and like in yellow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Imola yellow. Imola yellow. Imola yellow. Imola yellow. Too. Those yeah. cars. Lugaro were blue. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, you could just kind of yeah. dial up the boost. And mm -hmm. I, I remember when those S4s came out. I remember the day we we got the first one at the dealership. And yeah. um, one of the sales guys went out on a test drive, but he drove the car because. They didn't want any customers driving the car right away, so he took out the customer, right. and uh, he's he's turning. It's, it's, it's not a good story for the oh, car, no. <laughs> but uh, let's just say that he took it too too fast on a left turn, and he ended up. It was winter, yeah, with so, full on summers, yeah, drifted, yeah, cut two poles in half, yeah, right. They both walked, walked out of the away. car, yeah, right, and he the salesperson looks at the customer and goes, "Are you okay?" He's like, "Yeah, when we get back, I want to buy one." Mm -hmm. Any car I can walk away from, mm -hmm. like I'm buying this car, right? Yeah. So, yeah. but that wasn't with us. That was not with us. <laughs> no, so, you know that that yeah. generation of A4 was yeah. really sort of Audi's modern renaissance. Yeah. Right? Like that was when everything that was a game changer. Started. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. That the was five sort of link, like, uh, yeah. Francis. Five Bannon. link, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Right? You know, everything that you think about modern Audis kind of started there. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Audis and movies. Lots some of movies they've been in now. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah, some of my favorite, you know, the, the one Audi I would want for my garage is a big you S8. Know, S8, S8, yep. Ronin spec, <laughs> yep. front end yeah. smashed yep. in. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> yep. Ronin's passe, it's the transporter. The, the transporter. Trans yeah. yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm, Do you know the funny story I read about, about, uh, about Ronin? Yeah. And, and this speaks volumes for the, the drivability of the, of the Quattro. Yeah. Is that they, they had to basically dismantle yes. the car so in order to make would, it drift in order yeah. to make it look good yeah. on camera because yeah. it was doing everything so well that yeah. it just didn't look fast yeah so they had to take <laughs> everything apart and, yeah. and like all the electronic gadgets just to make it they built make a, it drift built mm -hmm. a rear wheel drive out of it yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what they did for transporter too yeah, yeah they had to yeah because it just stuck so well yeah it just was not hollywood <laughs> yeah that, that that's sort of an interesting movie because that they they've got a bunch of right hand drive cars and so you had the stunt driver sitting in the passenger seat, driving the car, and the actors were in the cars with them, with a with a phony steering with a phony yeah. steering wheel and a phony dash, and you know you can see some of their reactions like oh, yeah. <laughs> reaching for the air brake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, but you know I mean I, they used Iron Man to essentially yep. launch the R8. <clears throat> um, you know Q7's got smashed to bits in, in Iron Man. Mm -hmm. Multiple times. Then you had that one Iron Man where he drove an Acura and you're like, Well, that yeah, was Avengers. That? that was Avengers. Yeah. Avengers, yeah. Got, Avengers? Yeah, 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 it was Avengers. Avengers. Yeah. Okay. Got tied yeah, with yeah, them, yeah, yeah. but Iron Man movies was always out. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Hitman? Hitman. Yeah. And and the more recent one, too, right? Like, yeah, both of them. There was a sequel. Yeah. With, uh, sort of, uh, yeah. The Audis are always driven by the badass sort of Yeah, thing, you. Right? Even a television series, you know, Grey's well, Anatomy is using. I was going to uh, say too. I was going to say too. Well, everybody, modern, modern everybody family, started to jump yeah. um, they, He drives. He only he drives Audi products. Yeah. He has an A8. Right. Yeah. yeah. His wife well, has and, a Cayenne. Yeah. And CIS Los Angeles has yeah. now brought in a Q7. As uh, they got rid of the, they had a Cadillac, I think, as the yeah. SUV or an excursion or whatever. Now it's a Q7, right? Yeah. So and it's in every episode. Do you now, think? So. Do you think that this sort of pop culture stuff has added to the brand's appeal? Yeah, absolutely. Certainly. Yeah, I think it's I think it's stepping it up, and yeah. you know I mean we're definitely taking on the other brands, um, in regards to just the cars itself. You know I yeah. mean it's a, the 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 greatest thing about them I think is that they still carry that whole Audi feel that that German kind of you know you know I don't know give me a big hug or whatever yeah. <laughs> you know you you want to call it you you get you get really really. Pumped up and excited 
just about the cars. It's how, uh, how important is Quattro as part of that? Performance? Quattro is absolutely necessary. It is people. <laughs> it's uh, being in the uh, front line in, in sales. A lot of people come in. It, it actually it's it's alarming sometimes. They don't know that the Quattro means something. Like it means all wheel drive. Like yes. they, they recognize Quattro, but they still ask, is it all wheel drive? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, it's Quattro. That's, <laughs> it is. That's basically Audi's signature. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's I, what I we're so. known for, right? And it's, and it's pr I would say, correct me if I'm wrong, but why uh, other manufacturers are doing it, all wheel mm -hmm. drive. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, Audi's just so. doing it, right? Yeah. I mean, to be, to be honest with you, I don't think I could ever go back to, any, to, to all any, wheel anything drive. without all-wheel drive, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, my sister, she had a, she had no two A4 Quattro, mm -hmm. and she bought a 2011 A, uh, A3 mm -hmm. flight track, and I, yeah. she, I said to her, I'm like, you better be careful on this because you're going to miss your Quattro. And she's like, no, 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 it's going to be fine, it's going to be fine. That she first buys quarter, a car, right? She mm -hmm. buys a car first winter, she's like, no. I need my Quattro back. This is ridiculous. I can't handle this. Yeah. And it, it's true. I drive any other car in the winter. I mean, drive from here to Montreal. You see all these cars in the ditch, and you're sitting there cruising along the road, and the cars handling perfectly fine, and you're blowing through everything. There's nothing that you can stop you when you have Quattro. Yeah, nothing. Oh, a good set of tires. Well, and a good set of tires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A good set of tires. It's the parts. Yeah. 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 yeah, everyone else is spinning away, and you're yeah. Like, yeah. you're on that yeah. snowstorm on the way to work. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Light turns green. Everybody sits there. Front and, wheel spinning, and you're rear wheel spinning. Street. We're gone. Yeah, I think I think that's one yeah. of the reasons that Audi thinks that there's still a lot of potential left in the Canadian market. You know, mm -hmm. to really be number one. You know, within within the segment because it's an all-wheel drive market. Mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I I can count on one hand the yeah. number of front wheel drive cars that I've cars. sold this this year. You've yeah. driven a lot of other cars. How do, how, do, how, do, how do the other manufacturers with their all wheel drive system in our segment compare? Well, I think I think what's you know, <coughs> the thing that really and we could get really technical and mm -hmm. say, okay, you know, the Quattro in an A3 is kind of different from the Quattro in an A4, but really fundamentally I think what you can look at with that is because they sell so many of them with all your drivers. It's basically baked in at the mm. beginning. You know, you have none of this sort of, okay, we're going to engineer it as a rear wheel drive car. And I, I drive a rear wheel drive car, drive car and I love it. But, you know, and then we're going to kind of bolt a f all wheel drive system onto it. And in order to bolt the all wheel drive system onto it, eh, we're going to have to kind of raise the ride height because not all of the stuff fits there because we didn't start thinking about all wheel drive until later. So it's going to look kind of a little bit funny. Mm. But it has all-wheel drive now, and actually that all-wheel drive, well, it only comes on when the back wheels are spinning, and so it's, what you get with the Audis is that really, you know, they started, it's almost like they started thinking about Quattro first, and then, okay, we need to, you know what, in some markets, they don't need all-wheel drive, we'll make a front-wheel drive. Actually. Right. And I think that that's different. <coughs> it's true, because when you go, when you go to, um, like, uh, in the Caribbean and stuff, yeah. and you see all the Audis that are there, yeah. they're all front track, yeah, every and, single one of them. And, and, in, and in Europe, you know, they sell yeah. tons and tons of mm -hmm. front-wheel drive Audis, but you know that the car has been kind of designed for all-wheel drive. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's the big thing. Quattro is so good. It's bad. Like Beca that it was actually bad. Yeah. And my favorite Audi race car is that IMSA... GTP, mm -hmm. I think it was an Audi 90. You said GTO. GTO, yeah. GTO sorry. Yeah. Audi 90 product. With uh, yeah. Yeah. super duper wide fenders yeah. and those deep, deep <coughs> the true white the, wheels. Yeah. Two frames. Yeah. Two frame yeah. car. Before that, they Before used they the Audi 200 Quattro right. and 88 right. and Trans Am. Yeah. And all they did was penalize the hell out of that car. With, and it still kept with winning. With weight, tire width, everything, yeah. and it still kicked their butt. <laughs> yeah. And it's then they amazing. entered IMSA the following year. Yeah. And. Uh, they were given some hell over that. Yeah. You know? It was funny, like, if you've ever seen the Quattro the Machine movie, when they built that 200, it was basically a road going car that mm -hmm. they converted to race. Yeah. You know? Yep. Which oh, was yeah. even more remarkable. And all these guys are, you know, using custom. Two uh, chassis cars. Two oh, chassis yeah. cars, I guess. Yeah. You think about this the original car. Quattro rally car, right? It was. Well, even the Quattro road cars, like, ah, you know, we've got this coupe, we want to give it more traction. Let's. Basically, take a military vehicle drivetrain and bolt it to a turbocharged five-cylinder engine. Holy crap, that actually works really, really well. Iconic rally car. You know, 
the uh, yeah. Uber. I think that some of the coolest stuff that they've been doing has been the Le Mans, you know, definitely. race cars. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. The R8 was the one that started it off. Yeah. That's yeah. what we have to thank our yeah. TSI motors for, right? Because yeah. that mm -hmm. was the first, that was their test bed. Yeah. Yeah. And that and yeah, now you've got putting the TDIs in the and TDIs yeah. one like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're at the e-tron, e yeah. which is kind of the next big thing. I mm -hmm. think we're going to start seeing more and more of the e-tron vehicles coming. There's an RE e-tron coming. Yeah, it's pretty exciting stuff. It's the future. Do you want to tell us about your race car? 1981 Audi Coupe GT for four runners. Not a Quattro. Not a Quattro. And Audi started <laughs> racing on pavement. Yeah. And uh, this was one of their later modern era uh, cars before they went to Quattro. So the Coupe GT was front wheel drive. They raced on European circuits in the European Touring Car Series and the British Touring Car Series. And uh, Those were some of my favorite Audi races. Yeah, yeah. And they developed uh, the Audi 80 basically uh, from that. And then the next step was, of course, Quattro, mm -hmm. which came up in, I guess, late 82, 83. Mm -hmm. But they had a lot of success on pavement before that. And then Quattro came in in the late 80s and was here to stay. Decimated all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And still to this day. Yeah.